Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you wanna know, then tune in, folks, cause this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use. So sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or cop, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong. They'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. Uh, welcome everyone to Talking Fishing. Big night coming your way tonight. It's a bit like a rotating uh, wheel here at, <laughs> at Talking Fishing. Adam Ring, welcome along. Thank you, Dave. A couple of quick things I need to get out before we talk yeah, fishing. Yeah. Big shout out to Trav Dowling. Thanks for coming in on short notice. I oh, gave Dave week. all of 24 hours notice <laughs> last, last week, week. So shout out to you. And Khan the Pies, 2-0. Oh, what are you, and second on the ladder yep, or something now? Congratulations to Doesn't... the AFLW Pies too, who what? unfortunately lost on the weekend oh, to the line in the prelim but another great mm. season we're just building nicely tiffany newton has uh covid <laughs> <laughs> she's uh in bed quite crook to be honest dr corey green welcome to the show hey guys the doc's uh, in the house yeah, the doc's in the house <laughs> i know you love that title so uh, yeah, really yeah. Cool. Also, um, I, th I thought you must have lost my number I haven't been invited on for a little while two years almost to the day <laughs> you've what done happened? a couple of shows with us yeah done a few oh, yeah. Right, well yeah. you know, you know Dowling bloody hogs the set, you know, <laughs> on the VFA side of things. But no, to, uh, just a cheerio to um, to Tiff because she is quite sick with COVID. Yeah, well and um, and a cheerio to your old man, Corey. What's his name? Uh, Daryl. Daryl's Darryl. resting up in hospital there at the moment with a bit of a hip, hip replacement, replacement today. So got to get him back out in the boat as soon as we can. Oh, he'll be running around yeah, the block tomorrow. Yeah, we'll be right, we'll right, be right, right, right soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, Saints had a win, and I couldn't have cared less on yeah, the no, weekend. Yeah, so. away, Dave. So moving on. Yeah. So <laughs> can I can I also say that uh, five more sleeps until the end of daylight saving? Yeah, that's, that's a little bit depressing. <sighs> I mean. I, it's hard. It's so dark in the mornings, and you just want that to be fixed. But it's it's the end of it's the, it's the end of the season, isn't it? Yep. You know. So, yeah. Um, hate hate it when it ends, but you kind of look forward to it at the same time. Yeah, so. it's a yeah, it's a funny thing. Yeah, it'd be nice to. It's yeah, good. Change is good. Change is good. Um, Corey, uh, you know, we we had planned to get you on the show by the end of the season too, and my biggest question to you was. Uh, where's the kingfish? But I found them, and we'll talk about kingfish a lot later on. But we're going to touch on um, we're going to touch on artificial reefs, all the artificial reefs in Port Phillip Bay. I think there's I haven't got the count. I think it's like 13 already. 14th is about to go. Uh, we're going to talk about kingfish reef. We're talking about all the kingfish research that you've done over mm. over the years. Yank flathead, King George whiting science, black brim, and if we've got time, mako shark. So. A lot of science on tonight's show uh, with Dr. Corey Green, and hey, people might learn a few things. We normally do. Yeah, it's when, definitely. When we've got these Corey are exciting on, so. shows, these because um, um, we can translate that information and put it yeah. into practical sense for us. Yeah. Rec uh, shows. Well, yeah. you're, just, you're just going to have to call me Corey. You can't keep on saying no, Dr. Doc. Corey Green all the no, time. You're going to have to change that up. <laughs> ah, it's all good, Corey. We, you're one of the one of the crew. So, but <laughs> folks, let's have a look at what's being caught by the people at home. It's time for Catch of the Week. Catch of the Week, brought to you by Shimano. Can I just say that tonight there are three species that I don't think have ever been on, on Catch of the Week before. Now, we, we were talking mm -hmm. about it before the show. Mm -hmm. uh, eight years and probably up around 300 episodes of Talking Fishing now. And I reckon there's three species tonight that haven't featured before. So. Let's see how we go. I might right. ask you right. uh, to guess in a minute, but let's get on to this one. I've got an got a email from good old Don Newman from the Western Port Angling Club. Donnie. I won't mention his age because he gets embarrassed that he's 97. <laughs> Have a look at this. Uh, hi, Dave. It attaches a photo of a 54 centimetre rock flathead caught by Western Port Angling Club member mm. Gordon Osterberry. Uh, it weighed 1.272 kilos, which is a new club record. He caught it south of HMAS Cerberus entrance in Western Port. Well done, Gordon. That's a big rocky. That's a nice rock for you, isn't it? Hey? Yep. All right, next one, Matt Bradshaw. Got a lovely calamari in Coronet Bay. There's some big calamari getting around the traps at the moment, isn't there? Yeah, that's probably about a year old, that one. So, you know, they, okay. they, they get right up there. So that would, would have spawned about this time last year. So, so calamari spawn this time of year? They spawn all year round. Do they? Yeah. Ah. But have their peaks over summer. 
Yep. Okay. Hmm. Good to know. You well, you would know. Um, <laughs> Len, Liz, and Don all got out on the King George Whiting in Lyle's Channel. Now there is someone missing from that photo. That's Liz's husband, Rob. <laughs> Rob. And uh, you know why? Is he caught you that day. He, no, he caught bugger all. You know what? What a champion of a bloke. You know, you let everybody Who, else. Let everyone else catch yeah. stuff. It's sort of um, man. I actually don't know that he planned it that way. <laughs> I actually just think he doesn't know how to fish. But anyway, well done uh, to Liz and, and crew. Uh, Chris Body. Now, Chris writes, uh, let's have a look at this. I fished off Black Rock on Saturday and I got the trifecta. A 40 centimetre whiting, a 40 centimetre flathead and a 40 centimetre salmon. Missed out on the quaddy with a snapper, but he had a great day's Fishing said large schools of salmon busting up in the water everywhere. Well done, Chris. Good stuff. It sounds like a good day. Um, Kai and Bo Hassan, have a look at this. Cracking oh. snapper off Mount Martha. Twin boys. It's not November. Um, tw no, twin boys. Proud dad Stu writes in. Took the twin boys, they're 12 years old. Kai and Bo out for snapper fish off Mount Martha and they hit hard. Four of the five fish took uh, fresh squid and one on the pillies, but there's a cracking he couple of fish too. Fish. And how good is it for the kids to get out there too? They'll oh. remember that for their life, yeah. I reckon. Yeah. yeah. How good is the snapper run oh, no. at this time Insane. of year? Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's, uh, is it isolated to that Mornington Mount Martha area? I'm not seeing them for anywhere else. It's, yeah, it sounds like it. Not seeing mm. them in Westernport, but is anyone targeting them? Yeah. That's, it's interesting, no, that's, isn't it? They're big fish too, they're not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Oh, this is, okay. So this, this is the first species. Yeah, this you one, this, this one. one I knew. Uh, Corey, you probably saw this doing the rounds as well, but Paul Stellini sent a photo in of a cobia he caught off in dented head. Yeah, uh, quite unusual. Oh, you're, <laughs> Corey Green, you're a doctor, <laughs> we're not allowed to mention. Well, I heard there was something caught off, uh, caught, uh, another one caught off Corner Inlet at one stage as well, not so long ago and we've either. S we've seen so them in Westernport Western too. Port, yeah, 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 one over yeah, yeah. You do so get the odd one. Unlikely, unlikely but you know, it does it does happen. Just like dolphin fish or something come, yeah, sometimes yeah. Yeah. cruise on past. You'd be pretty wrapped if you oh, yeah, caught that, wouldn't you? Totally. I reckon he let it go though. The last thing you'd expect on sand. There wouldn't be a size limit in Victoria, would there? I don't, I don't no, <laughs> Get Trav onto that. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's have a look at this. Uh, another email. This is, oh, Marco from Sharkman Fishing Charters sent this one in. Lucas and James. Uh, Six-year-old Lucas, nine-year-old James with their first ever Ma Mako shark. Proud dads Marco and Andrew. I'll tell you what, they'll love uh, seeing that up there. But well done, boys. Sharks bigger than the kids. Oh, look, I'm envious. <laughs> I've been doing some shark research recently yeah. and just trying to get out and catch a shark has been a little bit tricky. So yeah. good, good on them for doing that. It's great. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's keep going. Port Welsh Bull's been on fire with a big gummy sharks. Chelsea got a couple here. And they're just absolutely oh, fantastic. Wow. Hey, that's pretty good going in it. Proper ones. All right. A species that we've never I'm featured. Not I'm not looking at We've the never featured <laughs> on Catch of the Week. Nath Vella, have a look at this for an eel. Oh, wow. <laughs> Off the, from the Broadrib River down near uh, Marlow there. The Broddy. Yeah. yeah. That's a cracking eel. That's a big eel. That, that deserves to be a Catch of the Week. Yeah. <laughs> and funny thing about eels, they all start their life at the, in the Coral Sea. So every eel what? you see, they spawn up in the coral sea yeah. and they come down, they come into the rivers and they, and they grow larger. So Is that right? don't That's underestimate the eel. They've got pretty awesome life history. Wow. Look what happens when you get a doctor on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I reckon this one hasn't been oh, on before. Hunter Broadway with a hammerhead shark from Golden Beach. Oh, Aren't they a great looking? Surely we've had one of them on the show before. I don't know that we have. Oh, no. maybe we haven't. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. That's still, that's a, aren't they just a very unique looking species? Oh, crazy looking things, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. They're just they're fantastic. Great. Yeah. They're great. Yeah. Good on you, Hunter. And uh, lucky last, Dean Cummings, great friend of the show. Dino. Husband of Cara, uh, a lovely brim from Nelson in the comp on the weekend. That's a cracking nice. brim. Nice, good brim, bro. Yeah. Well done, Dean. All right, if you'd like to send in a pick of your catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, email your fishing pics to info at ifish.com.au. Fish on! I want to go fishing. Coming up, fisheries news, and we take a look at all the artificial reefs in Victoria next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. G'day, Callan here from Paul Worsland's Tackle World Cranbourne. 
Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance-free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water, truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my body. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne, it's now time for some very fishy news. Welcome back to Talking Fishing. Corey Green, Senior Fisheries Scientist with the Victorian Fisheries Authority, in the studio for Tiff, who has COVID. So, all right, let's get on with the news. This is a great news story, I tell you. Uh, the headline reads, Perfect Prawning Attracts Fishes to Lake Tyres. Lake Tyres in East Gippsland is experiencing its best prawning season in 30 years, with locals and visitors flocking to the region to enjoy the event. A natural occurrence resulting from the system system opening then closing to the sea means millions of prawns have made their way to the lake congregating in the shallows each night drawing people from across Victoria to Lake Tyres crowds have been waiting in the water on calm nights equipped with dip nets head torches and prawn lights to scoop up their haul, their haul. With a bag limit of 30 litres per person, keen anglers can walk away with more than enough for a prawn cocktail or two and a gourmet barbecue. Great, isn't it, down there to see all that happening? Mm, I remember doing it as a kid. Yeah, yeah. It's great. amazing um, the scenes down there. Oh, Two, three hundred awesome. people on a Saturday night yep, just yeah. getting out and enjoying it. How's this for a story? Uh, Malakuta, the place to be, is the headline. Malakuta seems like the place to fish at the moment, especially for dusky flathead carrying golden tags. Mm. Six out of the last seven winning fish have been duskies from Malakuta with the most recent one going to David from Morwell. Like many other winners, he was on a fishing and camping trip to the area where he scored his $2,000 fish. We regularly travel to Malakuta and we, and we really wanted to go this year to help the community recover from both bushfires and restrictions, David said. Now, let's have a look at the photo of his fish. I think we've got that coming up. I was out fishing with a mate in his boat when I landed the flathead and when we saw the tag, when we called the number and confirmed it was a winning fish, we were so happy. It's always a great trip to Malakuta. The day after I caught the tagged fish, I landed a PB 68 centimetre dusky as well. David is splitting the winnings with the skipper of the boat and plans to spend his money back in Malakuta. Awesome stuff. Thank well done. done. That is great to see. Um, another bit of good news. Uh, the headline reads, mums and dads move into Arcadia. We've talked about all the baby fish at your new native fish hatchery at Arcadia, but look out kids, the mums and dads are on site now too. Over the last week, the, the VFA team at Arcadia have begun placing Murray Cod and Golden Perch broodfish into their ponds. Of the 32 ponds on site, 12 are reserved for breeding fish, while the remaining 20 are plankton ponds used to grow out larvae into fingerlings for stocking. I think we've got a photo of a, a good um, Murray cod being stocked there too. So far, 12 cod and nine yellows have been moved into brood, brood fish ponds. All of the fish were salvaged from irrigation channels two years ago and have been living at Snobs Creek Hatchery awaiting their move to Arcadia. In coming months, this figure will grow to around 150 brood fish, helping produce more native fish next season to stock at your, at your favourite fishing spot. How good's that? This gets bigger and bigger, doesn't it? Um, it's, it's a great job VFA's doing there with, with setting up Arcadia mm. from, uh, you know, an election commitment probably three and a half years ago now. Yeah. Uh, to, you know, find a block of land, build the infrastructure, have the fish going in. I mean, that's an achievement and a half. Yeah, and, and those fish are now coming out. You know, yeah. It's, it's great. Yeah, good stuff. Mm. All right, Corey, I've got a bit to talk about tonight yeah. with you. Let's get into it. Um, I want to have a look at all the artificial reefs yeah. in Victoria. No, oh, when I say all of them, in the modern era. Yep. So about 15 years ago, yep. uh, some new reefs went into Port Phillip Bay. They mm -hmm. were reef balls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we've got a bit of a map here to show you of, uh, of Victoria. But not only Port Phillip, you've got them in other areas of the state. 
Yeah, yeah. Off, off to the east there, got Mallacoota, um, Lake Tyres, Gippsland Lakes, um, and you know even the big ones down at Torquay. So the Torquay are those uh, big concrete um, frames that we've got, you know, a few metres high, mm. uh, and to attract some some of the pelagics. But uh, you know we've worked with uh, a lot of other um, a lot of initiatives to try to get this done as well. You know the Nature Conservancy um, putting in, oh, the, shellfish putting in the shellfish reefs and things like yep. that. We've got the, the modular balls to increase the habitat and the and the like. So yep. yeah, it's not just putting anything anywhere. It, there's a lot of a lot yeah. of thoughts being put into. I think into we've got a map of Port Phillip Bay too. The ones that are specific to Port Phillip Bay. Yeah, yeah. So the, what have we got there? About. 14 or something, did we? Th 13 in the bay and the 14th's about to go in. Yeah, so yeah, a real combination of, of these reef balls and also the um, the rubble that we go with, that goes in and you put um, scallop shells in there to really increase that, that habitat for other, other critters and creatures to grow. And, mm. you know, it increases the biodiversity, um, lots more smaller fish can come in and then you know, and attracts the, the larger fish for, for mm. people to go and fish. But it's not only restricted to boat fishers either, it's, it's, it's shore based. I was mm. going to say a few three sites there that we could see on the map aimed at uh, I guess getting fish closer to the shore and access to land-based anglers. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's always a good thing. Well, yeah. you can cast to the ones in Geelong, at, in Inner Harbour. Uh, is it Port Arlington? I'm looking Port at Port Arlington. Right yeah. Uh, is that Altona? Altona. And Frankston Pier. That's right. Yeah. You yeah. Can, that's right. You can yeah, cast pretty much. Yeah. to all of those. So that's the, pretty cool. the thing about this is there's 13, and they, these are quite big reefs, by the way. Yeah. They're, they're not just small reefs. Yeah, yeah. There's 13 reefs. The 14th is about to go. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Yeah. At the Kingfish Reef, but. Those other 13 that have gone in over the 15 years, like this Kingfish Reef, all these environmental experts, forward slash uh, keyboard warriors, uh, are saying, well, how come we didn't know about it? Even though this was publicised for three years now, it was an election commitment, it's been in the papers for at least two years, and these environmental keyboard warriors are coming out saying, oh, how dare you put something in Port Phillip Bay? Mm. Well. There you go, there's history. I mean, 15 years, 13 reefs already, and mm. they've been good for the water, haven't they? It's been great. It's yeah. been really good. It's actually putting habitat back in. Habitat, yep. And, um, and no damage done at no. all. No, it's, it's... Good for fishing, it's good for the environment. Fishing. Yeah. Those shellfish reefs, yeah. they're quite big, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're quite broad and extensive, and, and, and all the flora and fauna associated with it yeah. as well. So it's not only that the attraction that, that the fish can come in, it's, mm. it's the filtering of the, of the water to clean the bays yeah. as well, something, yeah. that we, something that we need in places, yeah. Let's have a look at Kingfish Reef, because this is exciting. Um, how long before this goes in? Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> mid-April <laughs> these are going Well, in. there you can see there's a map of the peninsula and um, you can see that green on your screen is the dolphin sanctuary. Yep. You know, I went past there on the weekend. You know how many dolphins I saw in there? <laughs> what? Adam, come on. How many? How many reckon? Oh, the wild guess, I'd say probably none. none. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's where the new um, kingfish reef modules are. And uh, they're going to be great for the bay. They're, they're, they are. There's going to be 16 of those concrete platforms um, that are going to be submerged yeah. soon. So yeah, they're, otherwise they're, there's the sand. It's basically sand that they're, they're going to be sitting on. But we've yep. done a lot of consultation process. You know, look, got all mm. the appropriate permits yep. that we need, um, environmental impact statements, all, all that sort of thing. And yeah, it's go, it's really going to benefit the area. So One of the things. Oh, yeah, so sorry. how how does that suit kingfish so it's called a kingfish reef yeah. so how does that differ from the reef balls and why that is a kingfish related reef that's the name i gave it nice. <laughs> i don't know if that's official <laughs> well, uh, well uh, in that area you probably know that there's a lot of current that moves in and out in yep. and out the rip so these um, reefs have been made they're different angles uh, and whatnot where the concrete comes up so it really produces a bit more current and eddies and turbulence up -welling. And, and upwelling yeah. and it's going to attract the smaller fish mm. and attract the large key fish. So, exact same modules are off Shoalhaven on the New South Wales mm. coast mm. and they are just chock a block full of kingfish. Mm. How good mm. would that be for you to oh, well, <laughs> well I mean one of the things I was going to ask you Corey when you come on the show is where have the kingfish gone and we're going to talk about kingfish in the next segment but yeah. Have a look what happened to me on the weekend. I think we've got a picture here. There you go. I found him. Found him. Oh, I reckon. I reckon. I've nearly put in a hundred hours since Christmas uh -huh. trying to find kingfish. It's been a tough year. 
Yeah, it seems to be a bit late this year, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but still being caught oh. throughout the year. But yeah. Matt Sini found them on Friday. I believe a lot of boats were in the heads on Saturday. We went down there yeah. on Sunday, 6 o'clock in the morning, got our bait, yep. and uh, got some nice calamari and... Yep. Not one reel was turned in the rip on Sunday. It was just incredible. That's what happened. Like there, there was about 60 boats there. Yeah. Um, we had to go offshore and found them off Point Lonsdale. Yeah. Most you know, frustrating fish in the ocean. 40 yeah. metres of water and there was kingfish. No, I wouldn't say everywhere. There was a mm. good patch Enough. of them. Yeah. Mm. And, and mm. between about eight boats, there was one caught every 20 minutes for about three hours. So mm. kind of tough fishing. But yeah, anyway, so it's mm. good fishing. But I was happy not. to get two. Yeah, mm. totally. <laughs> but anyway, they, they, that's kingfish, isn't it? <sighs> Typical. Yeah. I know we're going to talk about the science, but <laughs> they're there Friday, they're there Saturday. Yeah. Sunday looked dirty and green and... Yeah, you know. which even that is... Well, the water just... Turn, it's had, a bit mind-boggling how How that does happens. the water turn over like that when we've had no rain and very, very little, little wind. wind? Don't keep looking at me for the answers, mate. I, I don't know <laughs> I'm not allowed to mention that word that starts with D and ends yeah. in R. <laughs> so you don't, know, you don't know why the water turns green when it was blue the day before. I mean, it's you've lived down that way all, the, all, all your life too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen photos of you as a young kid catching big kingfish. Yeah, of the biggest one I've got, it's probably not the biggest in the area, but mm. when you're 13 and catch one 21 kilos, it's, oh, it's big time. It, it's that's pretty good. good yeah. That was great. That yeah, was great. Yeah, that yeah. is a big fish. Yep, yep. Oh, I'm yeah. stoked. Were they... In those days, do you remember? I mean, because you've lived down there all your mm. life. Uh, were they more abundant down then, around, around that time? Yeah, it's difficult to say because it, it's hard to know how much fishing pressure was actually mm. on and how many people knew. Yeah. Um, but a lot more bigger fish in those days. Yeah. A lot more bigger fish. Yeah. yeah. Even bigger than bigger, a lot bigger than ones that I caught. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big fish, though. Yeah. Yeah. Get a lot of fillets. Oh, off you'd that. be on the front cover of every. Fish report in Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got to go to a, a break. Coming up, product of the week, and we ask Corey why it's been a tough kingfish season in a little bit more detail. That's next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Good morning, spotters. Stephanie speaking. Fishing. Welcome back to Talking Fishing and we're going to fly through product of the week because Dave and I have a million and one questions to ask the doc, Corey Green, <laughs> sitting to my left about kingfish because we want to know where they are. But we're going to take this opportunity to introduce to you the 2022 range of Katana reels and they are fresh into stores as we speak. And these are pretty cool because they fit into that really affordable and accessible range of reels and what you get is bang for buck when it comes to the 2022 Katana. Uh, 1,000 through to 4,000 Dave, so yep. uh, no 5,000 in this size, which I think is pretty interesting. Mm. But these are your everyday whiting, calamari, trout. Yep. With an RRP starting at about 90 bucks, yep. what you're getting is a lot of reel for that money. So mm -hmm. the 2,500, four kilos of drag. So it is a finesse reel. So I think the calamari and the whiting guys, brim guys especially, stole that out of the picture. They are they are going to love these reels because it's something that you can easily set up, say three or four outfits, without going crazy on price but a nice upgrade from mm. the beginner stuff. Mm. The 4,000, this is where it gets interesting. So $100 reel, nine kilos of drag. Really? Mm. Nine kilos, pretty good. So that also almost becomes, I guess your flathead to maybe if you've got a snapper, you don't have to yellow stress belly. too much. Yeah, yellow belly, small cod. Um, mm. They're going to be a cracker. Three, three plus one bearing, so three and a roller bearing. Smooth as silk out of the box, which is what we come to expect these days. But mm. um, what I'd, a plain looking reel, like almost are. stealthy looking, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, well, I guess that's kind of how 
I guess, real cosmetics are going. Very mm. minimalist these mm. days, mm. nothing too crazy. Obviously, you have a rod range to complement them as well. Mm. Uh, but I think these are something that are going to be okay. Mm. Uh, it's for those who may be upgrading from a, a Sienna, which have been so incredibly popular for a long, long time. Mm. A worthy upgrade. Uh, I think we're going to see a few of them out on the water in the coming seasons. Yep. They're pretty good. Good old Katana. Well yep. done. That's good stuff. All right, we're going to talk more Kingfish, Corey. Been a tough season. It could all have started last week, though. I mean, we should should explain that in a bit more detail. There has been plenty of Kingfish caught this season. They were in Western Port around Boy 12, 12 for quite some time. Yep. Yeah. The, the guys that know how to catch them offshore have been catching them offshore. Yeah. Plenty of people have caught them. Uh, while trolling for tuna. You know, they've gone, oh, there's a king all of a sudden. And and there's been lots of reports of kingfish amongst the tuna schools offshore from both Western Port and Port Phillip. So it's not like there's no kingfish. No. But um, let's have a look at a bit of history for the people at home on kingfish. So this is what's happened in other areas, Corey, over to you. Yeah, so they were historically caught by commercial fishers in New South Wales. And, you know, they are catching around 600 tonnes. Um, in the early in the early 1980s, um, then catches sort of started dropping a little bit in the in the 1990s. And size limits were introduced as a man management um, way of controlling them. And yep. then around 1992, it, it was really saw this sharp decline in the population, and it was predominantly well thought to be due to uh, the trap fishery. So they stopped the trap fishery yep. to catch them. And you know, around that you know, 2000 to 2016, you know, they're only catching around 100 to 320 tonnes per year. So Significant decline from 600 tonne a year. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we saw um, some changes uh, in our fishery as well in yeah. Victoria. So after you know, what we saw in New South Wales was sort of mirrored what was happening in, in Victoria. Were they not caught commercially in Victoria? No, predominantly just a, a, a recreational fishery yeah. in Victoria. They, they I think we've got caught. some info in Victoria yeah. here. Look, um, they, they were caught, you know, um, in the shark fishery and things like that, they were caught, but you know, for, yeah. for us in Victoria, they were they were that um, really um, sought after recreational species yeah. that they fight well. They they you know great like to they eat. eat well. They mm. they they're, they're great fish. Yeah, you know, and we saw big fish. But mm. around that period, about 1992, same in New, in New South Wales, catches really started dropping. Then it all just went quiet. Yeah, for, uh, many years until around 2010 when. Um, we started getting more and more fish around the rip. You know, you could have two, 200 boats at the rip. Or, it was big around then, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was really big around then. Mm. So that's when we focused, you know, a little bit after that, a few years yeah. after that, but focused some of the research. I remember it. in about, I reckon it was 2011, because I'd actually started working at, at Tackle then, mm. and, um, and Paul and I were out in the heads mm. and we both caught a kingfish that day. Yeah. And we, and, 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 and I mean, this is, it was, it was just a weird moment in life, I guess, that I'll always remember, but Paul and I looked at each other and said, that's my first Victorian kingfish. Yeah. And he said, same. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. 2011. Wow. And, and I mean, I'd been going in a rumour for Naruma. 25 years. Yeah. And just you catch kingfish at Christmas all the time, you know. Yeah. Never caught one in Victoria. And, yeah. and neither Paul had had a TV show for many, many years and yeah. the days on Rex Hunt and so forth never caught a Victorian kingfish. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just been one of those, I guess, progressively growing seasons. But what sort of struck me as the most interesting thing with our I guess, return of kingfish, they've kind of been staggered between, I guess, a, well, this year's thrown it out again, but <laughs> a four monthly December through to March. But it's been that window, not, yeah. But not mm. that consistency from December to March has either been mm. A few in December, January really good, slowly peter off. And mm. then the next year, it'd be okay. Mm. All of a sudden they turn up in big numbers in February, it'd go mm. quiet, then mm. there was a year in March. Now we're looking at, fingers crossed, hopefully it's gonna happen in April because it's just struggled to, so there's been kingfish around, but yeah. not in those numbers where you get those yeah. congregation of boats in the rip mm. especially. Yeah. Where Let's all have stuff. a look at the yeah. population structure because you've got a bit of info here, Corey. Um, You've yeah, so so the project kicked kicked off, and we, we first of all we wanted to find out a bit of, about their structure, like where where are they from, mm. and so we looked at genetics structure from them. So that's determining whether fish that were caught in Victoria are actually from Victoria, or are they from New South Wales or, or elsewhere. So yeah. we concluded from that is that you know, when we had a look at samples from Tassie in New South Wales and Victoria, that it's all the same population. 
okay. which sort of backs up with the historical stuff that what happens in New South Wales has an impact on Victoria yeah. or what happens in Victoria could may impact, impact yep. on, on, on Tasmania or New South Wales as well. Yeah. Hmm. Now, uh, let's have a look at the next slide. Um, this is just about the size ranges, I guess, from the yeah. different parts of Yeah, yeah. Of so Australia. At, at the you know, Victoria. top is you know, fish from um, the western part of the state and the middle of the state and central and eastern part. And I guess what this really shows us is that there's a quite a large size structure from you know, anyway from you know, 30, 40 centimetres all, mm. all the way up to a metre 10, 20, so forth. And that's in a population sense and a, a fisheries management sense, that's really, really good information to, to see and yeah. to know that it, it's a it's pretty healthy fishery because you've got a succession of fish getting larger and larger. What do you know about them spawning? Yeah, look, a lot of people have had theories of, of spawning uh, in Victoria, of you know when they're aggregating around the mm. rip or the heads or, or wherever is that they're, they're spawning. But we found with the research that they're, they're they're ready to spawn at around that um, November, December, with the you know that temperature, the water temperatures coming up, and they're all aggregating. But with all the you know 400 or so samples that we collected, not one was it re actually going to spawn. So we yeah. didn't find one that was ready to actually spawn. That's interesting. So, yeah. So, so even though else. you've got big fish in Victoria, they're just not. Yeah, you might get the odd one. That's you know you. You know, 1.3 metres or something like yeah. that, that that is in spawning mode, but yeah. very, very small number of fish. So, yeah. And we even cut out their ear bones to, and had a look at the chemistry in their ear yeah. bones, and even and that told us that all the juveniles um, that we get were from, that were, were hatched in waters that we don't see in Victoria. The mm. temperature profile's not, not sound and, and you don't And you don't know where that location don't is? Don't know where that location is. We think yeah. it's off New South Wales and the deeper waters off New South Wales and yeah. warm, warm currents and things like that, but we don't, we don't know. We don't yeah. know. Mm. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at some of the, um, the age versus length in a graph, because um, you've got a bit of knowledge on that as well. I think we're going to get that slide up, maybe? No? <laughs> yeah, there yeah. we go. So you've just got age on the bottom and you know, the length on the top. So what this, what this is telling us is that, is that the growth between our fish caught in different parts of uh, southeastern Australia is very, very similar. You know, they're, they're pretty fast growing fish you know, and you know, up, to, up to around that 16 years of age you know, to get those big fish that are you know, well and truly over, over a metre. So, yeah. And that tells us in a fisheries science perspective and population dynamics perspective, even that tells us a lot of, of how to manage them effectively. Does that mean the oldest fish you aged was about 14 or 15? Oh, not necessarily, no. 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 Just no. where your graph stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, just it's a technical no, that's fair question. Enough. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. They grow pretty quick though. Oh yeah, the first, the first few years, yeah, exceptionally quick. Yeah, yeah. really. And that, that's, you know, they're, they're a great candidate for agriculture yeah. species as yeah. well. Let's have a look at the next slide. Um, oh, that's a bit of movement of the tags, isn't it? Where they, yeah. were, where they were caught. I don't know if you can read that from here. Yeah, look, so it <laughs> might be a bit hard to read, but in summary, we're getting a lot of fish that were either caught in New South Wales and come and, and, re, and tagged, sorry, caught, caught and tagged in New South Wales and they come down and they're yeah. caught in Victoria or, or vice versa. So yeah. it certainly matches in and marries in with um, the genetic stock structure yeah. of it to say it's a single it's a single stock. Yeah. I think there'd be a bit of a summary slide up next too that um, but some interesting facts there about kingfish, Corey, and yeah. um, there's still some knowledge gets. There's so, still isn't some there? knowledge, and we're, we're looking uh, to work with, well, hope to work with Deakin University and other people around to do a little bit more um, yeah. nice. information yeah. on them. So there you go. All right, we better go to a break. Um, some good information there. But coming up next, Kramer's mailbag, and we're going to discuss Yank Flathead and King George Wading with Corey Green next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. G'day, Callan here from Paul Worsland's Tackle World Cramerman. Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water. Truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my boat. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. Talking, fishing, nothing but fishing, we talk. 
talking fishing. Um, before we get into the new mailbag, last week I think we had someone talk to us about uh, fish cleaning tables and whether they had salt water in the taps. Now Travis went away and said, I'll find out. So he's, he's had the whole of the Victorian Fisheries Authority researching this during the week. Um, and it turns out, well, they didn't know. They didn't know, to be honest. So they had to go and find out. And I've got a quote here. This is from a report that got sent today. It says, we've had fisheries officers go out and taste the water for us where they didn't know. So they've been, <laughs> if you saw a fisheries officer during the week, go up to a tap at a fish cleaning table and put his mouth underneath <laughs> it. He was just checking it out for Travis Dowling. So, but it turns out there's only five in Victoria. Avalon boat ramp, which has got a manual bilge pump. Port Welsh pool, there's two tables. They have pumped water. And Port Albert have two tables with pumped water. And yeah. they're the only five that we know of that have salt water uh, to the table. So there, there you go. go. That's, uh, Trav thought there was heaps. I don't it's think he was right. Extensive research going into that. Anyway. <laughs> Carl writes, this is timely, if squid are colour blind, how come my red jig is killing it at the moment <laughs> off Flinders? <laughs> hey? Yeah, hey, Joel, question. we got you in the studio <laughs> yeah, hey, tonight. Hey, Joel, question. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Corey? Well, oh, look, one of my favourite jigs is uh, has red foil on it, and um, yeah, it's good. Are they colour blind? Yeah, they're colour blind. But they, no, you ask them, don't you? <laughs> 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 That's no, it. No, no. Well, they, they see in a different realm to us. They, they yep. seem like a polarised light. So you know, what could be red to us might seem a little bit different to, to them. them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, it's got big eyes. Massive eyes compared to the size of the body. Yeah. yeah very acute yeah. sight. All right. Didn't learn anything there. Um, Mark writes, how far north do you catch gummy sharks? My mate gets them at Bateman's Bay. Do they go much further north? Does anyone know? Oh. Do you know? Yeah, they, they do. They get them in Sydney? Yeah, they get them off Gummy Sydney. sharks? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, they don't really like them up there, though, do they? They call oh, them a smooth hound. Hey? I think they call them a smooth hound. Do they? I haven't so. heard of that. What about the north coast in New South Wales? Do they get them up there? Do they, they, they don't get them in Queensland, do they? Well, they sort of, you hit, you hit a point on the New South Wales coast where, like, the further north you go, the more they stop caring about sharks. They just <laughs> become a pest. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, oh, have a, this is, this, uh, we've got a pick here. Have a look. This, oh, this is just a comment on our Facebook, but I loved it. Have a, <laughs> have a look at this. This was product of the week last week, the shirt dress, and Edward's comment. Finally, something for brim fishermen. <laughs> oh, that's harsh. <laughs> Edward? It deserves a prize. You don't. get a prize. <laughs> no, I don't know what it is. There's a prize coming your way. And we've got one last one. This is uh, Mitch writes in. He says, Is it true that Adam had an issue with his seatbelt alarm in his new car? Oh, no, that's, uh, got a, what yeah, what is that funny. about? What's that about? Oh. What happened? There was a backpack sitting on the seat. On the passenger seat? Yeah. Oh, I ran I've never you last a new car. I yeah. rang you last week, and all I can hear is beep, beep, yeah. beep, this alarm and going And I was off. swearing at it because it was telling me I wasn't wearing a seatbelt when I was. Turns out it was the passenger seat. <laughs> and you had your backpack on there. Yeah. Since when's that been a thing? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Someone just wrote in, bloke called Mitch. Yeah, Heavy backpack. Yeah. Told, told to mention that. Uh, if you'd like to write into Kramer's Mailbag, this is what you do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, P.O. Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria, 3197 or email kramer at ifish.com.au Now, Corey, this is a species we don't talk about very often. I mean, we show it in Catch of the Week and mm. that. But the Yank or Blue Spot flathead, which populates yeah. Port Phillip Bay, yeah. and are probably the... Well, they're probably the dusky of Port Phillip Bay, aren't they? I mean, they're the they bigger... They pretty big. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a knowledge gap with that? With there that is. There is. Look, yeah, people have been catching them for a long time. Yeah. Don't get me wrong there, but but they're becoming more and more interested, and more targeted uh, species. So, mm. when we look at these targeted fisheries, we think, well, what do we need to know about them? What mm. what don't we know about them? Mm. So then we have the, the the knowledge gap. So, and with um, you know, science underpins a lot of our management decisions and yep. how they how the direction should should go to, to manage mm. them so if you so we need the science basically so yeah, yeah so we're kicking off a, a project to oh you are 
Yeah. Yep. They're going to kick off a project to um, look at the basic population dynamics on it. So it's similar to the kingfish, you know, their, their age, the size structure, you know, when are they mature? All these yep. fundamental questions that we can learn a bit more about them. Mm. Yeah. That, they'd live in the bay, wouldn't they? Oh, like all year sure. round? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? For sure. Yeah. Um, Joe oh, anecdotally, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Joe, Joe Farr would say that they have a, a season where you can catch them a lot. Uh, you know, mm. a, they're in abundance compared to other times of the year. Um, well, is that because they're hiding somewhere else in the bay or something like that? I mean, or possible. Yeah, well, I reckon totally. Joe's probably, and this is probably a testament to how good he is at his craft. He's about the only one I know that's probably taken any notice on when there is a, I guess, a seasonal fluctuation of mm. flathead, because. You'd flat you just think they're everywhere. Yeah. Mm. But, but the well, obviously they've got to, yeah, but yeah. and of course they've they've got to have some sort of yeah. season. They don't just Yeah. Yeah. And this will is, you, will this you is do some acoustic tagging to track them and see where they're moving in the bay? Oh that's not, not really. planned, but no, okay. it, 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 it may happen in yep. the future. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Good to have knowledge gaps and be working on it. So, it uh, now King George Whiting's an interesting one. Let's move on to that one. I think we've got a bit of a graphic here of, um, I guess, where they move. And, and you guys have known this for a long time that yeah. um, the juveniles come with That's the right. with the eastern currents. That's right. Yep, yep. So we we think that that the fish that we get in Port Phillip Bay originally have spawned uh, that the adults spawn off Kangaroo Island around May, and using their the ear bones of the otoliths working out the age, we've worked out that that takes around you know a few months. So in springtime, um, these small larvae uh, drift into Port Phillip Bay where they settle on the seagrass, mm. great habitat, and they grow up to there to about their four years of age. So when they're about that age, still not mature yet, they tend to head out the bay and then go and find their spawning ground. So it's been one of these questions of, you know, where some of these spawning grounds are, you know, yeah. kangaroo on, but there could be others in northern Tasmania or out to the east yeah, yeah. as well. But, you know, but, you know, speaking to Joe Farr the other day, he was yeah. um, saying that he's been catching some, you know, pretty good fish and other charters have been getting them up to yeah. you know, 50 centimetres. And, and with row in them? With row. So, yeah, so you know, whether they're the spawning or out. not, well, <laughs> yeah. you, you could have a minority that do that do stay yeah. in the bay. But well, well, I think we were talking early before the show. We yeah. were saying, you know, that uh, maybe you know, if ninety nine percent leave the bay yep. and one percent are left, but you know, there's, there was probably a couple of hundred ton netted that you may not have ever seen those fish because they're caught in nets. Now there's very little netting. In fact, there'll be no netting uh, after Friday in yep. Port Phillip Bay. Um, that maybe we're going to start seeing a few more of these bigger fish that perhaps are spawning in the bay. Yeah, you could do. Mm -hmm. And you might even see starting seeing it in, the, in your catches where you're getting good sized fish at the moment, aren't yeah. you? Right? Over 40s and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think Western Port's fishing better, although Joe is finding some big fish, but yeah. um, but we're certainly seeing some bigger ones in Western Port too, aren't we? Yeah, we are. It's, and it's, it's funny that we've had a, we're on the, probably the back end of a really exceptionally good whiting season but yeah. mm. the size is now getting to those jumbos now yeah so yeah. And that's that's always, probably leave that's always soon. exciting head, head off shore <laughs> anyway that's the way it is uh coming up next the all important hot spots and we're going to talk black brim and mako sharks if we've got time with corey green next on talking fishing talking fishing the Bow Morris Motor Yacht Squadron is a trailer boat and social club on Port Phillip Bay. The club has a great range of facilities, including multiple boat ramps, ample car and trailer parking, boat wash and fish cleaning, fishing competitions and boat safety lectures, boating activities and club events, a restaurant and two bars. Easy launch and retrieval makes for a relaxing time on the water for you, your family and friends to enjoy. And boating memberships are now available. The Bow Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, the best trailer boat experience on the bay. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now the segment you've all been waiting for, Fishing Hotspots. Brought to you by the Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, Melbourne's premier trailer boat club. Now welcome back to Talking Fishing. Last segment, Corey Green's in the house. And uh, Corey, about to see some of the six hottest spots in Victoria to go fishing. Bring it on. <laughs> oh, this is exciting. This, look, let's kick it off. The rip, Yellowtail Kingfish is the first one, and I know that Joe Farr was there today, yep. catching nice kingfish again. So nice. they weren't there Sunday. I don't know about yesterday, I don't think anyone fished there yesterday, but today, Joe Farr sending me photos this morning catching good kingfish in the rip. Get there when the weather's good. So that's the first one. 
The next species is interesting. Paul Worsling says uh, that wherever he was on the weekend, round Mornington and Mount Martha fishing for snapper, mm. he had this next to his boat. The garfish are back on in big numbers. Yep, they are, and doing the rounds this week, Dave, from a few shops everywhere is selling heaps of burly maggots yeah. and floats for garfish. They seem to be spread wide, Yep. Um, but there seems to be that thicker con congregation on the peninsula at the moment. Yeah, yeah. fun too. Oh, they? they're unreal. Oh. Yeah. So good to eat. <laughs> yeah. When, you know, people, I mean, they get, they don't get bored, but you, you get overseas and where you've been doing all this, and, and it's good to go, you know what, I'm gonna turn my eye on to mm. garfish, because yep. you've got to set up completely different. Yeah. Great for the kids. You know, it's back so to basics, isn't it? Yeah. 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 We all yeah. started on doing that, I reckon. Mini Marlin. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. All right, the next one over in Western Port, about your channel, King George Whiting is a hot spot. Right up that top end, beautiful place, especially if there's a little light northerly or something, it's pretty good in there. Yeah, one mm. of the few spots in the port where you can send a whiting bait out one side of the boat and a gummy bait out the <laughs> other side <laughs> of the boat <laughs> and be just as good a chance as uh, catching just getting ice. But the whiting have been really good in Western Port, kicked yep. into another year. Yeah. Mm. All right, the next one, Coronet Bay, some big calamari around at the moment. Mm. Uh, if you're from that side of the Western Port or even from Phillip Island, you can get over there and catch some good size calamari. All right, let's head around a bit further in the state and uh, we're going to talk about this species very shortly if we've got time, but the old mako shark, they seem to be quite prolific offshore at the moment. Yep, this is an interesting one. Eh. And uh, Corey, I'm not going to steal your thunder there because uh, you've been having a crack for a few makos for research purposes. I've been trying. Some days, <laughs> some days good, some days not so good, some yeah. days a little bit too good. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. But they certainly seem to be, certainly we're seeing them in the reports. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I tell you what, a place that never ever stops fishing well for brown trout is Eildon Pondage. Some big mm. ones in there at the moment. We got some great photos during the week. We just couldn't get all the photos to air this week, but um, some lovely big browns in Eildon Pondage at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. All right, let's talk about um, Black Brim. Corey down, uh, or Gip, well, Gippsland Lakes. Gippsland Lakes. Yeah. It's, it's the home of Black Brim, it always has been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys actually do the recruitment surveys on Black Brim down there, don't you? Yeah, so every winter we go down, have a, have a mm. crew of the scientists go down there, and they've got a, a uh, trawler, a little trawler fine mesh net yep. to um, tow through the water, and they collect all the little small small fish, yep. count them up, yep. and have a look at those over years, over yeah, each year. So there's about 50 different sites that they have down there. Okay. And, and I think the a graphic of the results of that so yeah so last year uh, over oh, the last you know six years having some good numbers better um, than average coming through, better than yeah, average yeah better. this year it might be down a little bit on numbers but that might be attributed to you know greater river flows with the amount of water you're talking about yep. earlier with the number amount yeah. of water coming through the Gippsland as well so look all of these fish are, are going to get bigger and bigger and when they get bigger more spawning as well so more numbers in the future hopefully yeah yeah yep. so you can use that I mean I, I, I would have thought you know well there was there was a big push down at Gippsland Lakes when the netting was banned to also take some action on the brim rules. Now yep. yeah. there is a slot limit yep. now in Gippsland Lakes only to help them recover, but it looks like natural recruitment's um, on the up anyway. Yeah, yep. and that's probably the reason why there was no change to the bag limit. Yeah. And and you know anyway, that's if they're recruiting well. We've got some good, good years to come. Good, good future. Good the future. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I, I'm sure I'm allowed to say this because it's well, that's probably not a, not a secret. Dusky flathead stocking again. I think in the next week or so into Gippsland Lakes. Oh, How good's that? Yeah, it's good. Like, it is good. <laughs> that place. I mean, it's already bounced back with with the King George oh, Whiting down you there. Think, try and cast your mind forward 10, 15 years. It's going to be. Right. Mm. Let's have a look at some of the Mako shark work you've been doing. I think we've got a mm. graphic here. This is, uh, you've been sat tagging them, haven't you? Yeah, so yeah. these little tags, uh, we get the Makos alongside of the boat, um, put them in the harness, put a satellite tag. So every time they uh, surface, the satellite tag obviously talks to the satellite and gives us a, an indication of where they, where they go. So these are over the last couple of years. So. Yeah, they're going through Bass Strait, but they're also going you know, right around Tasmania and up and down the coast. Yeah, wow, predominantly so following that shelf. You know what that yeah. tells me? 
They go wherever they want, whenever yeah. they want. Because you've got, how many, sh is that three, oh. four sharks there? Three sharks there. Oh, oh it'd be four or five. They all do something completely Everything. different. Yeah. Oh, well, they all swim around Tassie, except that red one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if I get in there, it'd be cold, but anyway. Yeah. But interesting, isn't it? It is, it is. Yeah. And it just builds the picture of things yeah. that we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So all it's this little people all feeds into. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, just to remind everyone, if you want uh, the real reports on Saturday morning, 3MP Talking Fishing 2, uh, we're on at six o'clock in the morning, or you can get the 3MP app and download it, and you can listen to us at any time at your leisure, on your phone, on your car stereo, all that sort of stuff. So um, we talked to, yeah, you know, we talked to Joe Farr Joe and Farr, Zach Cross yep, and Brett Geddes. Brett Geddes and all those guys every week. Steve Johnson in Western Port, some, some good friends, so we're chatting to them. Hey, Corey, thanks yep. for coming in tonight. It's been fun. You've been not only a great guest, but you're also the co-host because mm -hmm. Tiffany, who is watching in bed, has got COVID. Yeah, so. Get well soon, That's Tiff. Right. Yeah. I'll put it on my resume then. Yeah, 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 yeah. just <laughs> fill in for COVID <laughs> patients. But anyway, always uh, great insights into the work you do down at Queenscliff and your team of scientists down there. And um, yeah, very lucky job. Yeah, you do some. You do some it's great cool work. It's fun. Trust it me, really cool stuff. World class, very. Yeah. Ten out of ten. Really, really appreciate Jeez. your time. That's it for talking fishing. Hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget. Turn your clock back one hour at 3am 3 3 this Sunday. I know one person, Jared Day, gets up at three to do it. It's the end <laughs> of daylight saving for another season. And we've only got four shows left until the end of our season. So please watch us for the next four weeks because then we're gone until about September. Until we see you again on Talking Fishing next week, please stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Wolf.